Why are so many vegans failing and dropping off like flies and going back to eating meat and other animal foods? Well, a lot of vegans will say to you, well, they did it wrong. They just didn't know how to make it work for them and they didn't really care about the animals and the environment and all they cared about was going back to animal foods because they're addicted to it and they were never truly vegans in the first place. And it's like, oh my God, these vegans need to get their head out of their because this is not true. I am telling you now from my experience to so many other people that I've known that have quit the vegan diet. They cared about the animals so much and the environment and that's why we stuck it out for so long even when we became so deteriorated on this diet over a long period of time where it affected our health and our whole human experience in so many negative ways. And we tried so many things to make it work time and time again. But they say, oh, well, you did this wrong and that wrong. You did this thing that messed it up and this and that and that. And it's like, oh my God, Jesus. It doesn't matter what you say to any hardcore vegans out there that are very dogmatic and idealistic and very evangelistic around their whole belief system around veganism and why everyone should be eating a vegan diet, which some people call a plant-based diet. But be careful of saying that to vegans. They say, well, that is not a vegan diet. They're just some of these plant-based foods and they still pay for things to harm animals in the process. But yeah, that's a whole other topic for another video. And the reason why so many vegans fail isn't because they did it wrong. Guess why vegans, it's not working for so many people and why around 85% of vegans eventually go back to meat as shown in a study which you can see some of the information for here. It's because it is a malnourishing diet that yes, can work for a short period of time because most people that switch this diet, they come from a standard American diet and they switch to mostly plant foods that make them apparently feel so good because it's the best, most nourishing diet possible, one of the cleanest diets out there. But guess what? Most people are normally feeling good because they've removed all of the other crap. And yes, they are switching to a lot healthier foods, at least a lot of people believe. I don't necessarily believe that, but a lot of people say that. And they start to feel good. But over a long period of time, they start to become very deficient in so many different amino acids and minerals and vitamins and essential fatty acids and so on. And vegans will go out there, will say, well, you can get every nutrient you need on a vegan diet. Well, that's a lie. For example, cholesterol you can't get, but they say, well, your body produces its own cholesterol. But guess what? When you eat a vegan diet long term, your body starts to produce such low amounts of cholesterol that your body cannot actually get enough to produce all other hormones. As seen in this chart, cholesterol turns into all of these other different hormones that are key for us to feel the best within our mind and body holistically. And then essential fatty acids such as ALA, which is an essential fatty acid found in plant foods, has a two to 10% conversion rate to EPA and DHA. So it's extremely low. But if you eat salmon, for example, you don't have to convert it because you're just getting straight up EPA and DHA. And then there's certain amino acids that you do not get in a vegan diet, such as taurine and many other different amino acids. And getting things such as zinc is very hard because guess what? Most of these plant-based foods which contain phytates, and the ones that do is nuts, seeds, beans, grains, and legumes. And guess what phytates do? This awful anti-nutrient binds to all of the minerals within those foods. So vegans will say to you, for example, yes, you can get enough zinc, just consume quite a bit of pumpkin seeds. Well, guess what? The phytates are bound to that zinc, so when you actually break it down in your mouth and it goes through your digestive system, you don't absorb any of it whatsoever and it goes straight down the toilet. And this is the issue with so many other minerals as well, and this is why so many vegans do not thrive on a vegan diet it's due to so many anti-nutrients binding to certain nutrients and not making them usable. And then you've got so many plant toxins that irritate the gut and pretty much every single person that quits a vegan diet say they run into so many different digestive issues such as gas, bloating or diarrhea or some other digestive issue. And if you didn't know, the gut is known as the second brain because that's where a lot of the neurotransmitters are produced, which then go to the brain. And guess what neurotransmitters are key for? Optimizing your cognitive 
function, your brain health, and your mood, and your mental health. And so many vegans that are not thriving long term normally seem to be very depressed and just not alive whatsoever. Like vegan gains in a video I made about him recently doing a response to what he was eating. If you haven't seen it, click a link up above. Oh my God, he looks like one of the most unhealthiest depressed vegans out there. I'm not surprised that he, I'm well, I should even say, I'm surprised that he has not ended his life because he looks that miserable. And it's just like, oh man, these vegans who just keep grinding and grinding and grinding through this diet and blaming everything else that I'm not thriving on a vegan diet when it's this malnourishing, deteriorating diet. And they just need to wake up to the fact that it is not a sustainable, nourishing diet long term. We are designed for meat and fish and other animal foods that we've been eating for millions of years as proven through archaeological findings. And just think about it. When we're in a natural environment and there's still some tribal people around that live in the natural environment, they all eat animal foods. And then people say, well, what about the people in the blue zones? They're the longest living people in the world. They eat so many different animal foods. And guess what? They're the longest living people in the world. And there's so many people that reach 100 and above in our Western civilization, and pretty much almost none of them are vegan. And they consume things like chocolate and coffee and other animal-based foods and other certain so-called toxic foods, according to a lot of different people. So it's like, if you're trying to get it to work for you, yeah, you can take a million different supplements. I became one of the biggest supplement tearing possible. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands over six years of being a vegan because I'd end up with this deficiency and this one and this one and this one. So then I'm taking these synthetic supplements to try and meet my nutritional needs. But guess what? It's better to eat certain whole foods that are natural, that give you all the nutrition you need rather than taking supplements. Because supplement is an isolated nutrient that is not necessarily designed for us. It's not the best thing to be consuming whatsoever. It can be helpful in certain situations. Say someone's so low on B12 and it's gonna cause them irreversible neurological and nerve damage, then yes, it could be good to give them some B12 injections. So in certain situations, it can be really good to use supplements, but supplements do not make up for a bad diet. Eat a variety of whole foods, not just exclusively plant foods. And yeah, eat all the other ones. It's very simple. Eat fish, eat meat, eat organs, make things such as bone broth, even have raw dairy if you get on with it. Have raw cheese made from raw milk. Have ghee, have beef tallow, have all these different animal-based foods. Because guess what? They are very, very nutrient-dense in specific things such as amino acids and essential fatty acids and minerals and collagen and elastin and so many other things that you're never going to find on a vegan diet. And if you can find some of them on a vegan diet, like I said, most of them you cannot absorb due to the anti-nutrients. But guess what? The animal foods don't have any anti-nutrients in that stop you from assimilating the nutrients contained within them. And if you look at things such as liver, liver, just a very, very small amount, I think it's around 100 grams of it, the nutrition, more specifically the micronutrition contained within it, is equal to about the micronutrition of 2.5 kilograms of fruit. Yes, 2.5 kilograms. And guess what? The fruit is also not going to give you many nutrients that is not in the liver. So it is an amazing superfood, and I recommend that people just try and eat this if they possibly can. It's something that I eat on a regular basis. A lot of people that say in the carnivore movement that you don't need organs, well, you don't necessarily need it. But if you wanna maximize your micronutrition intake and you just wanna feel the best, I think it can be good for a lot of people to be eating organs like we would in our natural environment. And if you live in Thailand, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Paleo Robbie. They are a company in Thailand that only deliver in Thailand and I, only buy my meat and fish from them. They actually sell all pasture raised different animals such as pigs and cows and so on. All of their fish is wild caught and they actually test their fish for heavy metals and it shows that it's very, very low in it, unlike a lot of the factory farmed fish out there and meat and so on. And yeah, they just sell the most tastiest, high quality meat that can be sent to your door and fish and other animal foods. So if you're interested in them, there'll be a link down below and a coupon code for 500 baht off your first order if you spend over 2,000 baht. So yeah, you know what I say to these vegans? Fuck you. Stop telling people about your vegan agenda 
and telling them it's the healthiest diet in the world and then showing them things like Game Changers, which is just a Hollywood film with some really good actors in it that's selling loads of pseudo science. Instead, stop messing around with people's health and stop telling them something's good for them when it's not good for them at all, as so many people have proven time and time again. You think it's a coincidence that so many vegan YouTubers that have been eating a vegan diet for years have all started to not thrive and so many more of them are quitting every single year. There's a correlation going on. It's a sign that it's not good for people. But yet, these vegans will say, well, there's this doctor that says there's this science on a vegan diet and it being so good and this and that and that. And a lot of it is just very flawed studies that cannot be trusted and is not clinical, peer-reviewed, controlled studies. They're normally epidemiological studies which are completely flawed in every single way. So that's it from me in this video. I'm going to get off and watch a live stream where Drew Morg is interviewing Royal Bliss. And I would recommend that you watch a recording of it because by the time you're watching it, yeah, it's not going to be live anymore. I'll put a link down below for that. It's going to be very interesting to see what Royal Bliss has to say and what Drew Morg has to say too. This person that's been on a fruitarian diet for so long and has made himself deteriorate away to a point where he looks like Jack Skeleton in real life not good. I've made videos on him and on my channel. You can look them up if you want to find them. And that's it from me. Leave your questions down below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. So as always, stay happy, enjoy the rest of your day and yeah, just eat the most nourishing diet that actually makes you feel healthier and works for you long term. Catch you on the flip side. Peace.